So what's going on guys, DIY Dan here again, and this is another episode of Backroads Arizona. In this video, I'm gonna be redecking the floor on one of my enclosed trailers. Now the reason I'm having to do this is because the floor ended up getting damaged. I let a buddy of mine borrow it, and it came back to me with two holes punctured through the floor. Now he did offer to do the work, but I ended up telling him just to go ahead and buy the material, and I'd take care of it, because I'm a little picky about the way I like to do things. And that's what this video is gonna be about, guys. So let's get to it. So could I have done a couple of patch jobs on this floor? Absolutely. But the rest of this floor was getting chewed up pretty good. It is an older trailer. So I decided to go ahead and redeck the whole thing. Now, instead of ripping out the old flooring, what I ended up doing is putting it on top of the pre-existing flooring. The reason I did that is because it's just gonna add more strength by having that old floor underneath. The other thing is the old floor underneath is gonna protect the bottom side of the new wood that I'm putting in place. The only downside to adding a new layer of material to the top of the pre-existing versus replacing it is you are adding extra weight to your trailer. So if you're on the verge of being overloaded, it is something to consider because the average weight of a three quarter inch piece of plywood four by eight sheet is around 60 pounds. So I figure I did add about 200 pounds to this trailer. Now, if your trailer is larger, this can be a much larger concern because then you're adding more and more weight. However, if your material underneath is in decent shape and you're just looking to make it a fresh coat, you could always go with a thinner piece to add to the top. So the first thing I did was measure the width of my trailer at the back, because that's where I was gonna start laying my wood and cut it to width. I do recommend measuring the back of your trailer where you're gonna start, then go up four foot, the width of the wood that you're putting in and measuring it one more time just to make sure that your trailer is square and it's not tapering in for any reason or tapering out for that matter. I had a trailer that within an eight foot distance was not square by about an inch and I actually cut it to the skinny side and ended up with a wide opening at the front because I did not do this. Once cutting it to width, then I measured the distance from the back of my trailer to the wheel well. I also measured the distance that the wheel well came into the trailer, marked those out and did those with a circular saw and finished the little edges off with a jigsaw. Now, one thing I will say, just like I said, with measuring four foot up and measuring the total width of the trailer, you wanna measure these wheel wells individually as well, because it's hard to say whether they got them perfectly square and you don't wanna end up with a gap, assuming that they are the same distance on both sides. Since the lights were in the back door of my trailer, I also had a wiring harness that I had to notch out for the wires to go around that wood as well. I also had to remove the tie downs that I had put into the floor now, one thing I did learn about these things as well is at first I used just some large screws to hold these in place. However, I had to upgrade that because on one of my trips, the Coyote car or my little sand car that I have did rip two of the four of those tie downs out using the screws. So then I went to bolts and fender washers and I'm actually gonna upgrade from that as well during this process, which I'll go over later in this video. Once lighting that first piece of plywood into position, I went ahead and started measuring for the second piece. So if you guys are familiar with my channel, you always know that I tell you the dumb stuff I do, so hopefully you guys don't make those same mistakes. I actually forgot to measure the width of the second piece before cutting out the wheel wells and had to do some extra cuts because of that. I also had to mark out a little area where the door was that I had to cut out in order to make it fit. So in this case, I just set it into position, marked around the door, and then pulled it back a little bit and went ahead and cut that out with a jigsaw. At this point, I also put a couple screws in the back piece of plywood to make sure that I had a tight gap between the two pieces of wood. Then I went ahead and made my cuts around the step going into the trailer from my side door. Now I probably could have measured this out like I did for the wheel wells and cut it before setting it in place. However, I find it's easier sometimes to have it set in place. Just make a couple visual marks on it, mark that with a square and then pull it out and do the cuts that way. Once I was happy with the way the second piece of plywood fit, I did go ahead and anchor the back two pieces of plywood with some screws using a countersink drill bit so that they were flush with the plywood or lower. If you do quite a bit of woodworking projects, I highly recommend getting these type of countersink and drill bit all in one. The only downside is on the longer ones, they are a special drill bit and I have broken a few and haven't been able to find replacements. So I have to buy a complete new set but the time and energy it saves is well worth the money. I removed the two floor tie downs at the front of the trailer so I could go ahead and cut that final piece of plywood that I was gonna be putting in place. 
I did remember to cut this one to width and measure front to back to make sure it was square before trying to put this one in place. I actually purchased a straight edge clamp from Harbor Freight for this project. It would come in extremely handy for you, especially if you have a longer trailer and doing multiple pieces. Because I do most of my cuts on a table saw, I really didn't want to purchase a high quality straight edge clamp. This one did slip on me a little bit, but it did get me through this project with what I needed. However, if I would have bought a little higher quality and spent a little bit more money on a better straight edge clamp, there might not have been quite as many cuss words while doing this project. And once again, I did have to cut around the door frame a little bit to get this one to slide into place. So this ended up being a situation where I should have either measured out where the doorstep was and cut it before setting it in place, or I should have scribed it underneath with the pencil after it was set in place and then lift it back out and cut it that way. I decided to go with neither of these options and go ahead and just cut it after I had it set in place. Using a circular saw to do the straight cuts and then finishing it off once again with the jigsaw. The problem was I could not get close enough to the door frame using the jigsaw. So then I had this little miscellaneous bullshit piece stick in there and I had to finish that off with my multi-use tool, which does come in handy for several different purposes. And I do love this tool. To make that cut over top of the other material with the circular saw, all I do is set the blade height of the saw to the thickness of the top piece of material that I'm trying to cut. So therefore not damaging the piece that is underneath it. If I'm concerned about damaging the piece underneath, sometimes I'll either set it to that height and then barely lift it up a little bit and lock it in place at that point because I can always go back and set it a little deeper if necessary. In order to not waste much material for these final couple of cuts at the front of my trailer, I basically measured out the triangle on a piece of wood and made that diagonal cut across it. Then I was able to get both sides of these triangular pieces at the front of my trailer done out of a two foot by four foot piece of plywood and anchored them in place. So if you are installing some new floor tie downs or reinstalling them like I am in this case, I do highly recommend making a template for the bottom of that tie down so you make sure you get the hole the right size because you don't want to end up being too big because that'll weaken the strength of the tie down or your floor. You can use some heavy duty paper or in my case I just used a Mountain Dew carton in order to cut out this template. To ensure I was in the proper spot because I was reinstalling these tie downs, I went underneath the trailer and drilled up through two of the pre-existing holes. Then I put two screwdrivers in the holes of the template I made and set that down in place and marked out the inner diameter that I needed to cut out and the two other holes that I needed to drill. I drilled a decent sized hole so I could get my jigsaw started and cut out that inner diameter. If you are installing these new and not reinstalling them, you do want to go underneath that trailer and make sure you're not going to take out any wiring harnesses. You also want to make sure there's no cross members in the way. Now, if you do have angle iron for cross members, it's a good idea to try and get two of those bolts to go through that angle iron in order to have that tie down be super strong. Because my trailer had rectangle tubing, this wasn't really an option for me. And that is why I ended up cutting out these plates of steel and drilling the four holes. So that way I had the entire surface area of that plate instead of just four small washers holding that tie down through the floor. Now these plates I used were just some miscellaneous scrap that I had laying around and obviously you're probably not gonna have that. So at a minimum, I highly recommend using some nice heavy duty fender washers to put underneath the trailer to give it some good surface area instead of the plates. In cutting out tight radius holes in a situation like this with a jigsaw, there's two methods I like to use. One is I will take a drill and drill multiple holes around the mark so that way it makes it easier for that blade to rotate around in that tight radius. The other way is just to make several straight cuts up against that line where you're trying to cut it. So as you go around that inner circle, the little pieces just fall out of the way as you make the cut. When cutting these holes, I like to go a little on the small side to start and then cut it open little by little to ensure as tight of a fit as possible because the tighter these holes are, the more strength you're gonna add to these tie downs. The other thing I highly recommend is using some type of a lock nut, not just a lock washer on these because you can't pull them down super tight because you'll collapse the wood and without a lock nut, they might vibrate loose over time. So here's a regular nut guys. Here is a nylon nut. You can see the nylon little insert in that nut. That's what acts as the locking device for that. And then this is a crush nut 
They actually collapse the top of the nut. This is actually the best style of lock nut you can get, but they can be rather expensive. So I ended up going with the nylon nut for this application. So with the regular nut, the threads go all the way through with no restriction whatsoever. Here is the nylon nut. You'll notice as we get to the end where the nylon starts, it starts giving a little restriction. And the same thing goes for the crush nut. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. I do have some future plans for this trailer as far as making a spare tire holder inside and doing a coating on the floor along with painting the interior as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and it gave you some good information. If so, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it. The whole concept of my channel is to give you guys the most information in the least amount of time as possible so I don't waste your time. And I hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Later.